Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world joining us. Welcome to this One IO webinar where we're going to be discussing overcoming the blockers to modern and affordable service integration. My name is Toby Moore, I'm a consultant with One IO, and I'm very happy to introduce you to today's co host and guest, Yuha. Hi, Yuha, how are you? Hi, hi, Toby, I'm fine. Sun is shining in Finland. The sun Finally. is shining in Finland. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, that's all we can ask for, right? Um, exactly. <laughs> just a small caveat to this recording, we are of course uh, still in uh, elements of the COVID-19 lockdown, so I'm at home, but I think you, Ha, you've managed to sneak into a very empty and quiet office today. <laughs> that's right, that's right. But please it's slowly do, opening up, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, please do excuse any sort of working from home type like bumps in the road as we go along. Um, Yuha, would you just like to introduce yourself a little more for the people that haven't met you or seen you before and talk about your role at OneIO? Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, um, my name is Yuha Berihel and uh, I'm a CEO and one of the, one of the four founders at, at OneIO. Um, been been in, in this industry plus 20 years now, seen a lot. And um, one of the reasons we started OneIO back in the days was the, our own traumas in this business wanted to help out help out customers to to overcome overcome the challenges that we faced back then so i'm i'm really thrilled to see and discuss about the results of of, of this um, study super and uh what you know for those for those in the audience that don't know about one io or what it does what does the what does the business do and what does the product do yeah, well, when I always, um, we are in a working integration space um, um, as an integration platform as a service. Um, we are domain specific iPaaS, so to speak, that uh, we help help business business services, business service providers to to automate um, the integration delivery and management. So that's that's what what we've been we've been doing since 2011 already. Awesome. Thanks, Yuha. Uh, so Yuha just mentioned uh, that we're going to be talking about a piece of research that we've been working on recently. So yeah. you may have seen the Integration 2020 uh, project that was, that was ongoing, and it was a research project to find out what are the main challenges and, and, the, and the most uh, cutting-edge solutions that integrations of professionals are working on right now in order to move through all of the sorts of things that we need to be moving towards in terms of next generation integration and modern approaches to integrating software and services. So Yuha, for you, like what was the objective behind wanting to explore what the market is up to at the moment? Well, first of all, um, the whole idea behind the, the, behind the research was that this, this uh, integration space is, is really, really crowded. There are like mm -hmm. 13 and a dozen providers and uh, they all all claim that they can, they can, you know, automate things and they are helping out the customers. However, um, in our experience and our customers' experience, there are quite a uh, huge difference when it comes to the delivery models, for instance, how the integrations are actually delivered, how they're managed. And of course, the, the use case is also also important that the customers are more and more understanding that or they're actually looking to find um, solutions uh, that are more fit into the in fit in in purpose mm. so that's that's also something that we wanted to research a bit how, yeah how does, yeah i think that that comes really that comes across really clearly in some of the results that we're going to be looking through in terms of how much how broad and actually and because of that that broad nature of the marketplace, like how confusing it can be and what a wide yeah. variety of results and journeys to those results that people can take, you know, particularly around the cost of integration and particularly in terms of the time it takes to create and, and scale integrations as well. So we're gonna run through around five talking points and these talking points drive from some sort of trends that we found in the survey results. So we surveyed around 100 businesses across the globe to get a really nice broad and different uh, sort of uh, set of viewpoints and perspectives on integration. And uh, there are some really interesting and some surprising and some not so surprising trends that pop out through here. So I'm just gonna quickly give you an overview of the five points. We're gonna talk about the challenges facing integration professionals specifically to them. Then we're gonna look at the overall market maturity of next generation integration and how people are approaching that. And then we're gonna look at the ultimate goals and objectives that people are placing on integration across the wider business. 
And then we're going to look at what's stopping the marketplace from progressing faster in terms of like what's really, really blocking the innovations that should be happening to the sector as a whole. And then lastly, we're going to look at the, the realistic uh, uh, financial implications of integration and how much are people really spending. And then we'll do some exploration around how you know, we can start as businesses and as business leaders start to curtail some of those hidden costs and some of those not so hidden costs as well of integration. Um, so, I mean, what, just linking back to, you know, you talked about like the size of, of enterprises there and, and the sorts of service providers that, that those organizations be working with and so on. I just want to reflect on something that, um, that we saw Gartner say last year, which was this, this, this relatively bold claim that two thirds of the, the uh, incumbent integration uh, providers would, would, would fall by the wayside by, what was it, 2023 or something like that. Um, and a, a prediction, um, of course, but, but quite, an, quite a, a big one to come out of the likes of Gartner nonetheless. And, you know, one of, the, one of the observations that we've taken out of our research data is that, you know, incumbent software providers occupy too much of the marketplace, and that's a contributing factor to, to why things aren't moving faster than they could or should be. What's your personal view on, on those ideas? Well, we see that a lot still and um, at the moment the challenge is as, as Gardner states that there are like few players who are dominating the marketplace and um, um, they are they are all so big already that there's kind of hardly any any innovation in that sense because mm. it it would mean that they have to somehow change the way they do their business which is um, relatively old-fashioned in a way and uh it's um i think the challenge is that they the the kind of the uh usps and the things that they they provide it's relatively generic which means that it's a platform that if you have an have an expertise you can build on top of and that's not aligned with the, with the direction where the market is going which is the domain specific use case specific uh, best of breed offerings. So mm. I think that's those are the things that are now uh, affecting the marketplace a bit. Although they they own them well, like 80 80 percent of the market, so they kind of they can easily make the moves if if they want. So. And do you think it's um, the like the cost and complexity of changing? technology and business models and so on that prevents that from moving faster or do you think that's more or do you think it's something more commercial in terms of what people are willing to buy and, and where people are still willing to invest and so on it could be a little bit of both um, what we did back in the days is that we've actually uh, cannibalized our own business because mm. we didn't believe in that kind of business model would, would uh, provide scalability and, and uh, the customer value that we were we saw that the customer will customers will expect from from mm. companies like us so it's 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 kind of a disruptive in that sense that you have to somehow figure out how what is the value how you how you productize uh, things in, in in order to scale and that's i think you can easily read out from the results of this research is that the uh, it's with through all the questions and the, the pains that customers are seeing is that um, they don't find the resource from the markets who can help them, which mm -hmm. means that there are not enough people to to deliver what customers are willing to pay. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's a, it, it's a good thing, but also it's a bad thing because then then um, customers don't don't get what they expect from, and that's time to value, the cost of consultancy. All of those things are related mm -hmm. to the to the to market situation as well. So that's. That's where we need to be disrupted. That's where we. That's where we, you know, need to change the way we think, to change the way we deliver these kind of services. So, it comes down to the automation, robotics, and stuff like that. Mm. So, how? What? What are the actions that organisations should be taking right now to to reduce cost, save time? Um, first of all, I, I think they. It starts with uh, prioritising. The business uh, kind of requirements or outcomes that they're looking for. Then it's um, it's about um, looking at the vendor landscape. At what 
uh, what kind of vendors they have, what kind of, uh, and related when it comes to the, for instance, integrations, what kind of competencies they have in-house already, and where those scar, that scarce, scarce resource can be used in the most valuable way. And typically it's, it's not that you can do everything, you have to prioritize. So um, what we have seen and, and what we discussed with our customers is that they, they have so huge demand when it comes to digitalization, for instance, on the business side, the core business, that they, they just want to full, fully focus on that. And that means that the back office uh, functions and, and all these like business supporting functions, they have to find another means to, to you know, support the business. Mm. So I think it's all about understanding and uh, this kind of purpose, a fit to purpose approach, uh, choosing right vendors and uh, approach when it comes to the, what is the actual, what, what is the actual core business and how, where customers can really yeah, find the best well, value I think, from. I think that that sentiment tied up with what you said a couple of times in terms of um, time to value as a concept and um, you know, the language I'm probably more familiar to hearing outside of, uh, of this conversation is like the time it takes to build an integration, for example, mm. and that's very small yeah. thinking and time to value is a, is a much bigger way of thinking. And this yeah. whole idea of like trying to understand, you know, if you want to make changes, if you want to reduce costs, if you want to, you know, save time, you want to automate more things and all of this sort of stuff actually you need to just start thinking a bit bigger and whatever the line is that you're drawing in terms of we start here and we have great integrations here the line is bigger it starts earlier on and it ends later on and really understanding that and you know and it reaches much further into the organization and it reaches reaches much further back into how uh, technical roles and people within the organization are thinking about and talking about business objectives and so on and the focus where is the focus? Where's the focus? Exactly. Yeah, that's, I think that's the, the biggest thing. It's the reason that like, IT service management begins with strategy, for example, because you need, to, yeah. have to, you need yeah. to make decisions about what you're going to do and what you're trying to work towards. And of course, exactly. that's the yeah. first thing that we go, well, that doesn't really sound very exciting or sexy. So let's just move on to building stuff, you know. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <laughs> and, and but it's, it's really, so this, this way of thinking is ingrained in the guidance, but it's not necessarily ingrained in the practice, right? So, yeah. Um, so, so it's guess, all, of course, it's easy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's important. And I think the yeah. more that we say it and the more we repeat it, the more likely we are to get there. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today on this webinar. We have really enjoyed exploring some of the topics that came up in our Integration 2020 research project. The research project was inspired by wanting to really and truly understand the complexities, the challenges and the solutions that are going on in the integration marketplace right now. Uh, if you would like to read this full report, you can go to oneio.cloud and you can download it there for free. We're also going to be running a whole uh, series of webinars around this topic, exploring in detail different areas of the research that we've done. So please stay tuned for those and we really look forward to seeing you taking part in the different webinars that we've coming up in the future. And of course, please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and follow any of the links through that you might see around the screen right now to download the report as well. Thank you very much for joining us and thank you to Yuha for your contributions too. And we'll see you all very soon. Thank you.